It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Monday, Thomas joins us this morning, as always. And at this time, we get to talk about sports and all that's happening. Monday, once again, thank you for being with us. It's always great to be here. So it's a pleasure to be talking sports this morning. So um, um, let, let's start off with uh, Jose Peserio. I mean, looking at his antecedent, he started first all the time. He lost the match. His first game uh, with Mexico, Nigeria, playing with Mexico, we lost that particular one, 2-1. Uh, and it, it really didn't turn out very well, uh, the Algeria game right there. International friendlies, uh, Nigeria, four days after Nigeria really lost, you know. Um, what are your thoughts? Do you think that he's the man for this job and he can lead the Super Eagles, you know, to... The promised land. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't know who's laughing there, but <laughs> I'm quite discombobulated because the results that we are getting so far from this man is not what we are we are expecting. We are the Super Eagles of Nigeria. We, we shouldn't be losing games. And if you take a look, just as you mentioned, this first game he lost against Mexico, and his last five games. He has just won twice, and that is, uh, uh, again, a very lowly rated side, the likes of uh, Sao Tome and Princip, and as well as Sierra Leone. We had a struggling win in that game, a 2-1 win in the Afghan qualifiers for the next tournament. We lost to uh, Mexico. Uh, we lost to um, Ecuador, and, and of course, losing to Algeria some days ago. I mean, it was a game where the Super Eagles were very deadly on the ball. Every time they have the ball, they are very deadly. They are very promising. But in that game... They didn't even have the ball because Algeria were enjoying themselves. The goal we scored, I think it was a lucky goal. But, of course, shout-out to Terry Murphy for getting his fifth goal for the Super Eagles of Nigeria. It was an abys abysmal performance. The second goal that was scored uh, 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 from the outside of the box, many people are still not forgiving Francis Azor, saying that he was culpable for that game. So, I don't think it's just about Jose Pesari. It's about the whole team. I mean... I, I know it's supposed to get get the responsibility of making the team work, but I think our players too are not up to not up to par. We we just simply overrate these players, and you can say that that game, the key players, the key actors that were supposed to feature the likes of um, Wilfred Didi, William, William Trusekong, they got injured before that game. So it was basically a test game for the young stars who are coming up. But for me, Joseph Pesairo, I think we should we should still give him time. We should still give him time. What it matters the most, he he, some, he sometimes just comes up with something brilliant, just as it is in the in the Afghan qualifiers where he was uh, he were Nigeria, of course, beat Sierra Leone and as well as South and Principal. I think we should still give him time. We should still give him time. He may not be doing well, but we heard from him uh, the post match uh, conference where he said that uh, he. He, he hates to lose, and uh, that should be the mentality of every manager. But yet again, they are positive he has learned from that game. The key players did not feature against o o Algeria, but it should have been a game we should have at least get, gotten a point. And many people are still blaming the referee. Remember, Nigeria scored a goal in that game. They, are, they are doubled the lead uh, before the referee uh, called it up for ups, offside. So it, it, it's just a very confusing situation, and it's a little bit complicated. It just clearly shows mercy. It just clearly shows the struggle of a Nigerian football. And today is the crossroad. And uh, today is the day, thankfully, that we'll get to see, uh, we'll say goodbyes to the uh, Amaju Melvin uh, Penic led uh, administration, which for me, I'll just quickly describe it as a bittersweet administration. But for Jose Poissaro, I think we should give him time. All right. Um, interesting Monday. We'll come to the NFF in um, in, a, in a matter of uh, uh, seconds. Um, <laughs> uh, but... but Let's talk Why about <laughs> something just crossed my mind. But let's talk about the goal. Is, is there a goalkeeping crisis in in the Nigerian national team, men's national team, the Super Eagles? Of course, um, when the Super Eagles in the warm up game faced Algeria B side, we saw that Maduka Akwe had a howler, a blunder that led to a goal being scored. Very oh, well, uh, yes, yes, yeah, indeed. And then, of course, we've seen the Nigerian saying, Oh, Uzo is a guy, he's the man, all over our Twitter. And Zoho now also, of course, fumbles and uh, concedes a goal, uh, which makes Nigeria lose this game. Uh, people, after the Madoka Koye Howler against uh, the team, be said, oh, you know, even the best goalkeepers in the world will make mistakes. You know, David De Gea, uh, Peter Cech, so on and so forth, uh, Manuel Noah, they kept mentioning these names. Do we have a goalkeeping crisis in the Super Eagles? All right, 
so this is why I won't really blame Jose Pissarro for Nigeria not performing well because we had this goalkeeping crisis plaguing the Super Eagles since uh, since the days of uh, Vincent Tiamo was over. I mean, so it's been a Super Eagles problem. So we should give Joseph Pissarro time for him to fix that problem. And now let's go to that question that you asked. The answer is an absolute yes. We have a goalkeeping issue, a goalkeeping crazy issue for, for the Super Eagles of Nigeria. And I don't know how they're, they're going to change this because time and time again, we have different coaches uh, with uh, Ike Shirumo was, was there as well. Aloy, uh, Aloy uh, was also there as a goalkeeping coach, but it's still the same issue. I think it's just time for us to dump these players. I, I love giving people chances, at least for you to uh, give me, the, just give you the benefit of the doubt, but at what expense? At what expense? Marco Koye, it's unforgiving. What he did against uh, the, the, the Algeria team, be it's unforgiving. What are you doing? I mean, we've seen mistakes, even at the World Cup, the 2018 World Cup, where Hugo Yoris, the World, the World Cup winning goalkeeper, made a mistake uh, where that saw the Christian score the, the second goal of that game. It wasn't that embarrassing. You made mention of other goalkeepers, but what Francis Azor did, um, uh, what Marco Koya did on that day was, I think I've, ne I've not seen that kind of holler before. So, he so, was not just making a mistake. He was shaking. I mean, what are you doing? But, but pro probably, no probably, there, probably, the reason I ask if we really do have a, um, a goalkeeping crisis is because maybe it's a crisis of confidence. You know how Nigerians came after Maduka Okoye, that he's just there being a fine boy, wanting to post for Instagram and for the ladies. And, um, you know, I don't know if that maybe have, may have affected his confidence, uh, meaning that he had to trend because... Keepers make mistakes, and you see that the butterfingers he had in the Nations Cup, it was just something that keepers, you know, would have faced. Maybe it's a confidence thing. We go to Uzoho. Uzoho too, he's kept for Nigeria in the in the in the World Cup, the last World Cup the Nigeria. That's right. Yes, I think it was it in Russia, and he didn't do perform abysmal. He was okay. He was he was decent. It was okay. So is it more of a confidence thing, uh, a passing thing that we need to see these players through, or not? And num that's number one. Number two, who should be Nigeria's number one goalkeeper amongst either these two? Don't forget, we still have Daniel Akpey, whom I have no confidence in at all. He's still there. Uh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. He's, uh, he's prone to mistakes. A calamity goalkeeper. Um, so who should be Nigeria's think number one? You're, you're being too harsh. <laughs> yes, yeah, sorry about you. Yeah, you know, even Debbie James was called Calamity James. Who should be Nigeria's <laughs> number one goalkeeper amongst these three or should we scout for other goalkeepers um should we call a Zenwa back you know should we look to the local league there's a guy in tottenham i'm seeing called josh oluwa i don't know if he's a goalkeeper but who should be nigeria's number one i think i think uh, first of all i would say playing for the super eagles of nigeria it's a very difficult tax but of course it's a pride of the whole nation so the demands are high i know francis Azo, the likes of marco Koye, they know that every time they make a mistake I'm pretty sure they don't go on Twitter. I'm pretty sure they don't go on social media because it is bonkers there. So the demands are high. And when you talk of confidence, confidence comes when you play a number of games for your for your respective club. If you take a look at Maduro Koye, he sits on the bench at, at Watford in the championship. Hmm. Uh, Monday, can you hear us? So, I mean, Monday is frozen uh, on the screen right there. Uh, we're unable to have that connection with him. We lost connection. But we're hoping that he's back. Mondi, are you back now? Can you hear us? Yes, I am back. I'm back. Go and, ahead. And I would like to continue from where I stopped before uh, that disruption. So basically, I'm talking about confidence issue just as uh, um, battles as I liked it. Confidence comes when you when you play a number of games in week in, week out for your respective side. Amona Nicosia, when, when, when last did uh, Francis Ozoa play? For his time, when, when last did he have consecutive five games uh, with this club side? Marco Koy is the same issue. These players they don't even play for their club. For they are not number one choice. So for them to be number one choice for the Super Eagles of Nigeria, it shouldn't be the case. So I think both of them cannot be the number one choice for Nigeria. I don't. I'm, I'm not sure Daniel Ekwe would love to play for the Super Eagles of Nigeria because he was criticised wrongly after the 2019. Uh, Cup of Nations. He shouldn't have been criticized that way. That freaky that was caught by Riyad Mahrez, 
very few goalkeepers would have stopped that one. So, uh, Daniel Pei, for me, is the best out of those, uh, amongst those three players. Daniel Pei, really? for me, is the man. Oh, interesting. But right now, is he playing I regularly? He is he playing regularly in South Africa if he's still there? I'm not. I'm not. Remember, remember, I said that he may not want to play for the Super Eagles any longer. I mean, he's, he's done with the Super Eagles. But for me, I think he has more confidence than this one because you can remember that time he was the uh, number one goalkeeper for the Super Eagles in Nigeria. He was the number one choice for Kaiser Chief. Okay, so uh, Monday, in South Africa. Monday, let's quickly move in, uh, move on, so we can also look at the NFF uh, elections. Hopefully, they happen today. Uh, a quick one now. And so uh, Nigeria is also built to play that international friendly games as Super Eagles with Portugal and Lisbon. And some people think that that's going to be a, a major disaster. You know, it feels like we're going to be showing our true colors. But I'm very patriotic right here. And I think that, you know, the Super Eagles would get their acts together. And the coach, you know, will be able to put the available resources to achieve, you know, win, which is the goal at the end of the day. But your thoughts quickly. Do you think it would be a disaster? What are your expectations? I'm pretty sure he has learned a lot from uh, the loss to Algeria. And he's a Portuguese, so he somehow may understand better how the Portuguese national team play. And he might just find the antidote uh, when the Super Eagles will be in action against the Portuguese side, who are the current, the current holders of the UEFA Nations League. I, I think as well that uh, if we have our players fit, but it's quite unfortunate that Nigerian players are not performing in Europe as we used to see them. The likes of uh, Wilfred Didi, he's having a disastrous season with Leicester City. He used to be our best player, but right now I'm not really sure. The Super Eagles player, they need to also play very well so that they can also execute uh, the plans on the formation of uh, the head coach when the time comes for Portugal. So it's going to be a, a, a very exciting affair and I, I'm not going to underrate the Super Eagles by any chance, I'm, I'm pretty sure they will show their true colors, uh, just as you highly uh, highlighted them. Mm. Uh, looking at the NFF uh, um, elections, I mean, I, I I don't know why we should go back to calling them NFA because um, with the way things are going, uh, is there any future ambition in in this uh, in, in this body? Um, I mean, you look at the fact that some sort of stakeholders who uh, are only known via the letterhead. We should appear a, a, a later a threat saying that um, if the election goes ahead, they're going to disrupt it and uh, bomb the place or something like that. I, I have to go, to go back to that. It's all chaotic, really. Um, I looked at one of the videos put out by one of the candidates whose name I won't mention, so we don't seem partial, going to submit his form. And I looked at the environment where he submitted his form. It was quite dirty. It was quite, I was like, is this where the NFF forms are being submitted for election of a body as big as this on the African continent? Um, so now that the court has okayed, the appeal court has uh, okayed the, uh, uh, the ruling, um, so the election, and said that they should go ahead with it um, September 30, uh, which is uh, today. What what are, what are your expectations? What should we expect? Well, I'm expecting that it will not be business as usual. You know, before now, it was just uh, 44 delegates who were entitled to, of course, vote uh, for the uh, candidates who have, of course, gotten their forms and uh, clarified, scrutinized, and they are qualified to uh vie for the highly exalted seats of the, the NFF. Out of uh, 10, mem uh, 10 candidates justly uh, for this particular seat, we know that uh, some of them are with the incumbent already, the likes of Shea Kungumi, who is the vice, the very fired vice NFF president, and the likes of uh, Malam Shiu Diko, who is also with the incumbent. So clearly it shows that there are some people who are the contenders, and uh, we should just wait and see what would happen. But I I'm, I'm pretty seeing that uh, it could be a time for a change. We'll get to see the ex-international Peter Saidi Da, and as well as the UK-based uh, David Bory Doheti. It's time for a change for the uh, Nigerian football. It's time for us to get to, of course, uh, vie for great tournament and uh, not just go for tournament, but vie to win it. Vice to win it. So, so it's not going to be business as usual. And according to the federal government 10 year master plan committee, which, which proposed uh, the amendment of the original statute uh, from uh, 44 uh, delegates voting, that's been increased to 101 delegates. And I'll quickly just like to break this down because I think it's quite brilliant that uh, many people are being involved or many group of persons are involved uh, for this particular election. So that I don't think everyone will vote wrong. So I'm just Putting a word, put, putting a word there that 
every delegate should try to be fair. She should try to be, of course, just in this. Uh, in well, but who, 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 who do you expect are the, are the, are okay. the, sorry, just a quick follow-up. Who do you expect are the, uh, who do you think are the front runners for those who want to get a sense of this, uh, this election very quickly? Uh, just like I quickly said that they are contenders in, in every, in every contest, they are always contenders and they are always pretenders. So for me, the contenders are the likes of uh, the verse vice chairman of the NFF, Vashia Kungumi, and not also forgetting the uh, the former, uh, the leader of the former, or the defunct LMC, I'll put it, I'll put it on way, Malam Ashiru Malam Diko, who's also part of the uh, Amaju Melvin Phoenix administration. And of course, uh, the CAF security officer, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Shiwu Ranwu, I can't really get his name clearly, is also one of the contenders uh, for that particular one. And uh, I think the pretenders could be, and the, the shockers, we could be shocked because, like I said, the delegates have been increased, so it's not going to be business as usual. We're not just going to be see, seeing 54 persons vote for this. We're going to see a different number of persons, 111. Okay. So right. I'm not expecting uh, I'm, that I'm the so, contenders uh, on the papers. So quickly, I mean, as we coast this conversation down, uh, who would you be tipping to win uh, the elections? So... The question is, who do you think will be the next NFF? I, 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 was, I was afraid you were going to go there. Messi is asking you to campaign. No, no, I'm just saying you tip off. I mean, you, you, you're like, who would don't win? Put me there. Uh, this is not a general she's, election. She's putting you on the spot. But I'm saying, Messi, Messi don't put my guy on the spot, please. All right. I'm clearly telling you who I want to win the election, right? And people will know who is my candidate, and I'm not going to do that. Oh well, All right. we, we will eventually. I, I, I just, I, mean, I just, the I just think, <laughs> I, I think it's time to have a, an ex-international run football in this country. I think it's time. I don't you think so, Monday, uh, Thomas? I think it's time. You know, because you look at what's happening in it, the trend. Not, don't be brilliant. I, I was trying to break great? down. I was trying to break down the people who are now involved in the electoral process, and yeah. it's quite fantastic that we now have the main actors. We've got six referees. We've got six play, player unions. We've got six coaches. We've got. 20 NPFL club representatives who are going to be voting. We've got 12 from the NNL. We've got 12 from the Nigerian Professional Women's Football League. So it's time for us to see an ex-international. These are people who have been in the game. They understand the game. They've been major actors. Like the likes of Peter Saida. I spoke to him some time ago. And he sounded like someone who has a clear vision of what he wants to do for Nigerian football. But I, I would stick with my guns that... I'm not tipping anyone to win. I just hope the delegates who are assigned to do the voting will do the right thing because it's time for Nigerian football to move forward. All right. Well, All right. we you need know, to move know, away I, now. I totally agree with him. You know, these ex-internationals really do, at least uh, for those who've been around the world, you know, they've seen how it's done in other parts of the world. These are football people, Mercy. They are football people. And they know how football is run. You look at Cameroon. You know, Eto Fields is there. You look at uh, Cote d'Ivoire. You have... Um, uh, Didier Drogba doing his thing, and you can look at other parts of the world, even Europe. Uh, uh, you had the the former French international, you know, uh, doing doing his thing and all that. So it's it's important. And let's see if this is if it will have a different result. So uh, we, we, we need to go now. Thank you, uh, Monday Thomas, for being part of the show. We appreciate your time. It, it was great. It's always fantastic talking sport with you guys. We could go on and on. Turns. Maybe next week we get to mm -hmm. the, next week we get to talk about Arsenal. Maybe. <laughs> well, Monday, that's the size of the conversation. I'll, I'll be, I'll be soon, so I'm uh, Monday, Thomas, we have to go now. Thank you so much. I don't much. know why you're rushing uh, him when we mention Arsenal. What is what's you, with you and Arsenal? We have to go now. I don't, uh, we're I don't really know why you're rushing time. him yes. when we talked about Arsenal. We know you're a Liverpool fan, mercy, but it's okay. Anyway, that's the size of our package. Um, you can follow us online on all platforms at Plus TV Africa, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, YouTube at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle, where you can watch our programs live with a live stream. My name is Kofi Bartels. And I am Messi Boko. Do have a fantastic, uh, you know, Friday morning. And don't forget to join us tomorrow for the breakfast special Independence. It starts at 7. We'll join the oh, president. Oh, yes, we're, we're back the, tomorrow. Uh, the presidential yeah. broadcast. Indeed. We'll be broadcasting right here at 7 o'clock. And of course, the show would continue from that time after the president's broadcast uh, with analysis. And We'll be talking about a lot here. So uh, book a date, make it a time with us on the show. Thank you. Quite strange to be here on a Saturday.